Hi, welcome to my video. Now in this video, we're gonna do some problem solving under assets and bases. So this is grade 11's work. So remember, while solving the questions, we'll try to embark a little bit on the basics so that we can understand on how to solve these questions. So without wasting any time, let us start with the first question, which is question number eight. This is assets and bases. And you can see that they worth a lot of marks, which is a total of 22 marks, um, chemistry paper number two. So now 8.1, it reads as follows. It says to us, consider the balanced equations for the reaction of water with nitric acid and ammonia below. So we have reaction one and reaction two. So reaction one and reaction two, we can see that it's either we have acid and base reacting with water out of these two equations. No reaction, now reaction number one, we can see that our nitric acid is reacting with water to form these products. Reaction number two, ammonia, it is the base. So ammonia, it is reacting again with water to form these products. Most of the times, these two types of reactions, we say they are dissociation reactions, whereby acid in water will dissociate into its ions. And then again here, when a uh, base, which is ammonia, it dissociates into its ions. But for a fact that this dissociation, we have hydroxide ions and uh, we have uh, hydroxide ions and oxonium ions. It's because these substances have reacted with water. So now, 8.1.1, it reads as follows. They say to us, define an acid, okay? Define an acid. In terms of which theory? In terms of lowry bronsted theory, we need to define an acid. Sometimes they can say to you, define base in terms of the lowry bronsted theory. Now here they want acid. So according to to according to according to these two guys, how do we define an acid? We say an acid. It is a proton donor. Don't confuse. Arrhenius theory and lowry bronsted theory. Arrhenius theory, it says that an acid, it forms H plus ions or protons uh, in a solution or an acid, it forms what we call the hydronium ions. That's us defining acid in terms of Arrhenius theory, but defining acid in terms of lowry bronsted theory, in this case, which is 8.1.1. What is an acid in terms of lowry bronsted theory? We're going to say acid, it's a proton donor. We know that in acid, it donates a proton. But if they say define a base, we're going to say base. It's a proton acceptor instead of its donating proton, okay? That's how we define acid uh, in terms of lowry bronsted theory. Now we move to one point, we move to 8.1.3. So, let me erase. So 8.1.2, it says to us, write down, read the question. Do not just answer, read the question. Write down the formula okay not the name not the formula write down the formula of one conjugate acid base pair in reaction number one we're going to reaction number one right so now we can see that when you talk about the conjugate acid base pair what are we talking about now let's go to reaction number one remember in this case we have an acid reacting with base but this acid when it reacts with base it will turn into what it will turn into what we see over here it will turn into no3 minus ions and then when water in this case which will act as a base, it will accept a proton from this acid, most definitely. So this acid will donate its proton to this base, and this base will accept a proton. But we can see that this base, in this case, which is water, will turn into H3O plus ions. So this reaction, it can be reversible. 
So when we reverse this reaction, moving from this point to that point, moving from the product sides to the reactant sides, we can see that H3O plus ion, it can react with NO3 minus ions. But in this case, for these two to interact with one another, we can see that H3O plus ion will have to donate its proton to this so that it can turn back to where it has started. Same applies when H3O plus ion donates its proton to NO3 minus ion, it will turn back into water. We can see that. So in this case, we can see that HNO3 moving forward, it acts as an acid. NO3 minus ion moving backwards, it will act as a base. It will have to accept a proton from H3O plus ion. So hence why we say, conjugate acid base this is an acid and this is a base then this we call them the conjugates same applies to here water in this case when it reacts with this acid is going to be a base most definitely and therefore this water will turn into h3 plus uh, h3o plus ions and this h3o plus ions will be an acid like i said it will have to donate its proton to no3 therefore this will be an acid so these are also called acid base conjugate these are conjugate acid base pairs so they just 8.1.3 they wanted us to write what Sorry, 8.1.2, they wanted us to write what? The formula of one, meaning we can see two. This, it's conjugate acid-base pair. This, it is also uh, a conjugate acid-base pair. So we just, they just want one, meaning we're going to choose this one over there. Okay? So that means I'm going to choose. I can choose this one. You can also choose that one. I'm going to say it's HNO3 and N. O3 minus ions. These are the conjugate acid base pairs. Or you can write this one H2O and H3O plus ion. They just want one. Okay, that's how we answer 8.1.2. Now we move to 8.1.3. They say to us, is the solution formed in reaction number one acidic or basic remember when it is basic we're gonna say it's alkaline so give a reason for the answer now we go back to reaction number one is this reaction acidic or basic this is the simplest question ever we're gonna say reaction number one it is most definitely acidic but remember we need to give a reason why do we say reaction number one it is acidic simply because we have the hydronium ions or we have the oxonium ions in the solution. So when a nitric acid reacts with water, these ions are going to be formed. But what is the name of these ions? These ions are called oxonium ions or you can also call them the hydronium ions, okay? For a fact that for reaction number one, the solution it is composed of oxonium ions. That means this solution it is acidic because oxonium ions they give acidity of a solution. So the reason that we're gonna give is we're gonna say the solution it has H3O plus ions this is the reason why we said that the solution of reaction number one it is acidic okay that's how we answer this question which is number three now we move to 8.1.4 8.1.4 it says to us define the term ampholite what is an ampholite it's simple and it is straightforward an ampholite it is a substance that acts as either acid or a base, okay? So that's how we define it. A substance or a compound, whatever, a substance, some they can say a compound, okay? A substance that can act as either a base 
or acid, okay? This is what you call an end for light. So I'm not gonna as I'm not gonna give a reason for that. I'm gonna give a reason 8.9.3. What is an how do we see an end for light? Because the following question, which is the follow-up question, which is 8.1.5, it says to us: write down the formula of a substance that acts as an end for light in the reaction above. So the reaction above, there are two reactions. So that means Reaction number one, we have an end for light. Reaction number two, we have an end for light. I'm not going to explain it further because I will do it under 8.0.3, okay, to explain what is end for light. So in this case, they want us to write down the formula of a substance that acts as an end for light in the reactions, not reaction, reactions above, meaning there is an end for light in these two reactions. So the formula, not the name, don't write water. They didn't say write down the name. They said write the formula. So the formula, it's going to be H2O. That's, an, that's a formula of, 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 for our end for light in the reactions above. We can see we have H2O here. We also have H2O over there. That's an end for light formula of an end for light. Read the question before you answer them. I know some would write water. They know what is an light, but they will write water. You're going to get it wrong because they said four mu. It's even highlighted in caps. 8.1.6, it says to us, explain the answer by referring to the role of this substance in reaction one and reaction two. So here now we are going to explain an end for light and see how does an end for light actually works. I said to you, an enfolate, it is a substance that acts as either acid or a base, right? Acid or a base or a base or acid. And then we said water, it's an enfolate. So that means water can behave as an acid. When water behaves as an acid, that means it's going to have to donate its proton. But when water behave as a base, that means water will have to accept a proton, right? Now we're gonna explain that the role of an n for light uh, in reaction one and reaction two. So for reaction one, let's explain for reaction one. For reaction one, we can see that water in reaction number one will behave as a base, meaning it will accept the proton from this acid because acid will have to donate its proton. But this acid will have to donate its proton to where? To this water over there. So that means for reaction number one, we got to say H2O behaves as base. It will accept A proton. Okay. And then for reaction number two, for reaction number two, we can see that water, for reaction number two, let's go to reaction number two. Water, it is now reacting with base. If water reacts with base, that means water will act as an acid. It will have to donate proton now. Okay. So that means here, Water behaves as acid, right? As acid. It will, it donates a proton in this case. That's how we answer this question, which is 8.1.6. I hope that was clear. Okay, that's how we answer 8.1.6. Right, we move on. Now, to answer 8.1.7, we have statement above it. Let us read the statement first, which were four marks. They say to us, a hundred cubic centimeter. This is what I always do to avoid complications in my life, okay? Each and every time 
when I see that my volume, it is given in cubic centimeters, I'm going to have to convert it into cubic decimeters. Okay. So each and every time when I see something like this, I don't want it. I get rid of it. I automatically divide by 1,000. We know that we're going to have to divide this by 1,000 to cubic decimeters. So on your calculator, you just punch your 100 divided by 1,000, which you will get as 0, 0,1, right? Which you will get your 0, 0,1. This is the first thing that I will start with if I was you, 0, 0,1 cubic decimeters. This is one thing that I most definitely do. Now I can read my statement freely. 0, 0,1 cubic decimeter of HNO3 of a concentration of 0, 0,2 moles per cubic decimeter is diluted to 0, 0,16 mole cubic decimeter. Look, this is what is happening. We have our nitric acid. This nitric acid, it has a known concentration, which is given to be 0, 0,2 mole per cubic decimeter. So this concentration, it is under what volume? It is under a volume of 0, 0,1. Now they say to us, the very same nitric acid with this concentration, it is going to be diluted, meaning they're going to add extra water into this concentration of nitric acid. So that means it is going to be diluted to maintain a new concentration. So the concentration now has decreased. You understand what I'm saying? So now this is what is happening. Let me draw a diagram for this so that it can make sense to you. Let's say for example, we have a beaker. Now in this beaker, we have a solution, but a solution of what? We have a solution of HNO3, which is our nitric acid. Now, this solution, there's a known concentration, right? It has known concentration, which was 0, 0,2 mole per cubic decimeters. Now, what is the volume? What is the volume of this solution? It's not one liter, but it's 0, 0,1 liters, which is 0, 0,1 cubic decimeters. One liter is the same as one cubic decimeter. This is the volume of this. Now, this is what is happening. This is the concentration, right? So we're going to change the concentration by doing what? By adding water. So addition of water will dilute, will dilute this solution, will dilute this solution. As much as you're doing your cold drink, your wild island, when you add water, what are you doing today? So you are diluting it. Right when you prepare your cold drink there uh, from the shop, right? You are dilute when you add water, you are diluting it. So, when we add water into the solution of HNO3, apparently the concentration decreases, it is no longer that strong because we added water. So, now the concentration decreases to how much? The concentration apparently it decreases to 0, 0,16 mole per cubic decimeter. Obvious, now the volume, it is unknown because remember, we started with 0, 0,1, but we added extra water. So the volume, now it is unknown. We don't know what is the new volume. So that's why here they say to us, calculate the volume of water that must be added to 0, 0,2 mole of this thing. We need to know what water was added. So we need to know what volume was added. Now, this is what we're going to do. The number of moles in this beaker is the same as number of moles in that beaker, but number of moles of what? Number of moles of nitric acid. We didn't add extra nitric acid. We didn't. Nitric acid was the same throughout. We just added water. That's what we did. So that means the number of moles is constant. It is the same. So what we're going to do is here, we're going to determine um, number of moles using the stoichiometric calculation formula, which is N is equals to C multiplied by V because we have the concentration, we have the volume. So we're going to calculate number of moles. The number of moles that we get in this beaker, remember we said that those number of moles, they're going to be the same as these number of moles. Therefore, for a fact that now here we're going to have number of moles from this calculation, we're going to plug 
this number of moles here. And therefore, concentration it is 0, 0,16. And therefore, we solve for the unknown volume. And then we are done. So let us try firstly by doing this one. So we're going to determine number of moles, uh, C multiplied by V. Remember here, we are talking about the concentrated part. Uh, concentrated part. Remember here, nitric acid, it is concentrated compared to here. So our C in this case is going to be how much? It's 0, 0,2. And then our volume, it is already converted into cubic decimeter. It's going to be 0, 0,1. And therefore, you run to your calculator. You're going to say 0, 0,1 multiplied by 0, 0,2. And then we just find it out that our number of moles is going to be 0, 0,02 uh, moles. Now, this is the number of moles for concentrated nitric acid. Now we need to calculate what? Uh, volume under diluted. So now we're going to say N is equal to C multiplied by V. Here we are talking about the diluted part in this beaker. Uh, diluted. So number of moles in this case is going to be 0, 0,02 is equal to concentration in this, the diluted concentration. It's 0, 0,16. And therefore we want to calculate the V. We divide both sides by 0, 0,16 and then we get that our volume will be, you're going to say 0, 0,02 divide by 0, 0,16. And therefore on our calculator, we get a new volume to be a 0, 0,125 a cubic decimeter. Now we calculate the volume of water that must be added to 0, 0,2. And therefore, that's how we solve this question. Now we move to question number 8.2. Now 8.2, it says to us, zinc oxide, this is the base, zinc oxide is insoluble in water. So that means if you take zinc oxide and react it with water, it won't dissolve. It is insoluble and can be harmful to the environment, apparently. So nitric acid can be used to neutralize zinc oxide. Ah, that means if I take nitric acid and then I react it, here it is. If I take my nitric acid and then I react it with zinc oxide, a neutralization reaction will take place. And we know that most of the time when a neutralization reaction takes place, it's between acid and a base. So from now on, you have learned that zinc oxide, it is a base. Um, now, let's have a look at this. They say to us, um, 8.2 point, uh, the incomplete equation for the reaction is this, okay, we've talked about that. We are not given the salt. We're not given the formula of the salt. We do not know the name of the salt, but we can determine that. But now let us go to 8.2.1. 8.2.1, it says to us, calculate the mass of zinc oxide. We want the mass of this. That can be neutralized by 80 cubic centimeter. You see, the moment when I see this, I stop everything, I convert because I don't want any mistakes. That's the rule. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna convert it to cubic decimeters. So that means I'm gonna have to divide by a thousand. So I go to my calculator, I run quickly and I say 80 divided by a thousand, it's 0, 0.08 cubic decimeters. I get rid of cubic centimeters. Now I can restart reading my statement. Calculate the mass of zinc oxide that can be neutralized. Remember, he said we said this is a neutralization reaction. So we want the mass of the zinc by 80 cubic uh, by 0, 0.08 cubic decimeters of nitric acid with a concentration of this. So now 8.2.1 for a nitric acid, which is H N O aha, H. NO3, nitric acid, we are provided with the volume. They say the volume of nitric acid, it is 0, 0,08 cubic decimeters. We are also provided with the concentration of nitric acid. Concentration of nitric acid, it is provided to be 0, 0,16 mole 
per cubic decimeters. So we need to calculate mass. What we need to do is to calculate mass of zinc oxide. That's what we need to do. From this balanced chemical equation, we can see that we have the stoichiometric coefficient already next to um, nitric acid. So in order for us to calculate mass, this is what we're going to do. Look, we are given the volume for nitric acid, the concentration for nitric acid. That means we can calculate the number of moles of the nitric acid. So to calculate number of moles of our nitric acid in this case, we're going to say C multiplied by V, stoichiometric calculations. Now in this case, our C it's given to be 0, 0,16. And therefore, volume of nitric acid is given to be 0 0.08. Now, let us do calculation. You go to your calculator, 0 0.08 multiplied by 0 0.16. And therefore, how much do we get? Apparently, we get 0, 0,0128 moles. Now, this is what we are going to do. From this equation, we managed to determine the number of moles of our nitric acid. We need, using these moles, we need to determine the number of moles of zinc oxide. But how are we going to do that stoichiometrically? This is what we're going to do. According to a balanced chemical equation, we can see that the stoichiometric coefficient for zinc oxide is one. So that means we have one mole of zinc oxide. Is two, it's a ratio. One mole is to how many moles from the balanced chemical equation? Two moles. Two moles of HNO3. This is what is happening according to a balanced chemical equation. But how many number of moles have we calculated for nitric acid? We said it's 0, 0,0128 moles of H. NO3. Do we have number of moles of zinc oxide that has reacted? No, we don't have them. So this is what we are looking for. So we want to determine number of moles of zinc oxide. From this ratio, from these ratios, we're going to cross multiply. So that means we're going to say this multiply by this and this multiply, this multiply by that. Mm -hmm. So 2 multiply by N, it is 2N zinc oxide which is equals to, you're going to say one multiplied by this number is going to be that number. So we're going to have zero comma, um, zero, one, two, eight moles. Now let us divide both sides by two. Number of moles of zinc oxide in this case is going to be, I'm going to say zero comma zero, one, two, eight divided by two. And therefore, I get my number of moles of zinc oxide to be 0, 0, this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 4 moles. These are number of moles of zinc, <clears throat> of zinc oxide. Remember the question wanted us to determine the mass, to calculate the mass of zinc oxide. Now, we know the number of moles. We're going to say mass of zinc oxide is going to be equals to how much? Number of moles multiplied by molar mass, multiplied by molar mass. So number of moles of zinc oxide, we said it's 0, 0,0064. And then the molar mass, we use the periodic table. So Zn from our periodic table, let me have a look at my periodic table. It says 65, okay? My Zn is 65 plus oxygen, we know it is 16, right? And therefore, let us multiply the whole thing by that. So we're gonna say 0, 0,0064. Oh, uh, let me say my answer, open bracket, 65 plus 16. And therefore, what will be my answer over there? The mass will be 0 0.22 decimal places, 5.2 grams. Therefore, this will be the mass of zinc, <clears throat> of zinc oxide. Now, the last question, which is 8.2.2, it's simple. They say to us, write the name 
and formula of salt X that forms during this reaction. What is the name of the salt? Ah, it's very simple. When zinc react with uh, our acid in this case, you, you must be so familiar with these things, okay, from grade 10. We're gonna form zinc nitrate. Three. Now, this is what is it been. You can see that zinc, this is zinc two. It's two plus ion. It's ions, it's two plus ions because we know that oxygen is negative two. So oxygen will come with negative two, zinc will come with positive two. And so I here we do not have subscripts. Okay, uh, uh, yes, subscripts, not superscripts, subscripts. So that means in this case, to form this water, oxygen will have to go with hydrogen to form water. That means NO3 and Zn, they will combine together to form this product that we see over here, which is our salt. So in this case, what is the name of this salt? It is called zinc. Let me write it here. It is called, ah, let me write, uh, where do I have space? Okay, I'll write it here. 8.2.2, we're going to say it is zinc. Uh, Okay, I'm sorry about the connection. What was happening? I'm sorry about the connection. I lost connection over there. All right, where was I? So we're explaining this. So we're explaining uh, right now the name. It's going to be zinc. Nitrate, okay, it's gonna be zinc nitrate. And then the for the they wanted us to write the name and the formula, and the formula will be Z N N O 3 2. Okay, that's how we answer this question. Mm -hmm.